Hello and welcome to today's Tech Talk webinar. Our product manager, Bob Kuszewski, and sales engineer, Kinshuk Rukshit, will go into detail about how you can use Apache Kafka with InterSystems Iris and InterSystems Iris for Health. Please know that this webinar will be available for playback, and we encourage you to type questions in the chat. These questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. And with that, I hand it over to Bob. Hi, thanks Kate for that kind introduction. As Kate said, I'm Bob Kuszewski, and with me today is Kinshuk Rakshi. We are going to talk about Kafka and how to use Kafka with InterSystems Iris. We'll talk about the agenda, and I'll give you a brief overview of Kafka and when to use it. And then Kanchik will walk you through some of the demonstrations of how to use it with InterSystems Iris. So let's talk about Kafka. Apache Kafka describes itself as the world's most popular event streaming platform. It's useful for any situation where a stream of messages is created, which might be, need to be processed by one or more systems. So for example, in a stock exchange, every trade can be thought of as an event that needs to be processed by the clearinghouse and reporting organizations. In hospitals, emergency room beds generate a stream of events about the condition of the patient in that bed, be it blood pressure rating or heart rate, et cetera. So here's how Kafka views the event streaming process. In Kafka terms, a producer creates a message and publishes it to a named topic on the Kafka broker. Kafka stores the message, and then consumer subscribes to a topic and can pick up new messages on the topic as they become available. So for example, an emergency room bed could take a periodic blood pressure reading and format that message in JSON and publish it on the blood pressure topic. The nurses monitoring application could subscribe to messages on that topic and bring any concerning readings to nurses' attention. This design allows for any topic to have multiple consumers, the ability to go back in history, and the ability to handle unpredictable workloads. What are some of the use cases of Kafka? So Apache Kafka is useful for any event-oriented application, which is to say, if you have a website, you can use it to collect your click streams or to better understand how people use your site. Do you take online orders? That's a stream of events. How about IoT devices? Kafka has become nearly ubiquitous in enterprise organizations. Apache advertises that more than 60% of the Fortune, 5, was Fortune 100 uses Kafka, but I believe that number to be much higher. It's used across nearly every industry and every size organization. Many current InterSystems customers are already using Kafka with Iris. Uh, one very large financial firm, for example, uses Kafka for processing market data and order flows. Interest in trade flows in and orders flow out. Uh, on the healthcare side, we have one very large customer who uses Kafka to manage large flows of fire messages. They get hundreds of thousands, millions of fire messages, all kind of very quickly, once a month or once a week. And uh, they then can process that message over a long period of time without worrying about kind of losing any of that information. So let's talk about what's new with InterSystems Iris 2022.1. In 2022.1, we've incorporated Kafka in two important ways. We've added Kafka adapters to the interoperability component of Iris, which is a low code workflow engine. This makes it really easy to read messages from a Kafka topic, save them to your database, process them however you need to, and maybe send them to a downstream system or, or back to another Kafka topic. We've also let added lower level messaging APIs to Iris to make it easy to integrate Kafka with your application. These APIs are built right into Iris and so can be used for either object script or a new embedded Python feature. So let's see Kafka integration in action. Kinshuk, take it away. Uh, thank you, Bob. 
Uh, clearly, as you've said, Kafka is a very capable and valuable technology for any number of industry applications, and into Systems Iris has made it possible to integrate with it straight out of the box, as it were. Here we see on this slide how a Kafka broker acts both as a source and destination of the InterSystems IRIS instance. On the top right and the bottom left, we depict the InterSystems IRIS production, which is our interoperability hub. Uh, this is the quote unquote equivalent of the legacy ensemble product, if you're familiar with that. The business service component uh, connects via an inbound adapter to upstream data feeds. And the business operation component uh, connects via outbound adapters to downstream data receivers. Uh, note again that a Kafka broker sits at both ends of this specific solution. And a typical enterprise implementation may connect any number of data processing components using such an event-driven design. This lends itself nicely to microservices type of architectures. So let's look at what we've got. Um, this very nicely demonstrates um, our low-code approach to integrating into Systems Iris with Kafka. On the left side browser window, you're seeing the uh, business service, and on the right side, you're looking at the business operation. Uh, so the business service connects to the upstream Kafka source, and literally you've got two uh, fields that you need to fill in. One tells the service where the server is located. In this case, it's located on the same host where Iris is running. And uh, this one says that the topic is called bids asks. A group ID can be specified. If one is not specified, uh, Kafka will assign uh, a unique identifier in any case, so it's not a compulsory field. On this uh, operation side, uh, we've given a client ID. Again, it's not compulsory. Um, it's something that uh, uh, Kafka can uh, easily fill for itself, but uh, all we need to specify is where the Kafka uh, broker is located. Again, it's the same Kafka uh, broker on this in this case uh, located on the same host. And <clears throat> the idea here is to appreciate that the plumbing is all taken care of. When we use the Kafka adapters uh, included with InterSystems IRIS version 2022.1, onwards. And with uh, one or two simple fields to specify, the rest of the effort can go into developing the business logic. And that logic exists within the Kafka trader process, which you're looking at uh, right in the center of the screen here. And we look at it in a little bit more detail uh, shortly. Okay, so um, let's, uh, if you like, uh, invent a, a problem that we're going to solve so that uh, we can uh, explain the parts that you will see in the demonstration. Some of this is clearly invented. Um, uh, it may or may not represent a uh, real situation in the industry. Uh, but here we go. We've uh, Let's say we've got a stockbroker who needs to fulfill trade orders. Okay. Um, and they receive any number of bids and asks for stocks. So for those of you who need, need that introduction, a bid is someone saying, I want to buy so many stocks at such and such price uh, of this particular um, ticker, if you like, and an ask is someone else saying, I want so much money to sell so many units of whatever it is, equity, stocks, etc. And um, a, a stockbroker also has got a bunch of uh, orders that they have received from their clients, and what they are really trying to do is they're trying to match the orders with the bids and ask for fulfillment. And there are potentially zero to many orders which can be fulfilled when a bid or ask is received. And the best match requires for rapid shortlisting to maximize profit and minimize time to execution. So speed is of essence, essence excuse me. So on uh, that note, let's go and see what solution uh, we uh, we propose over here. So we've got um, a Kafka broker here, theme on the top uh, part of the slide. Uh, we've got um, two different topics that this particular broker is, is dealing with. One is called bids-asks, and the other one's called trades. And at the bottom part of the slide, we've got a InterSystems IRIS instance, and it's got these out-of-the-box uh, Kafka inbound and outbound adapters uh, plugged in, and uh, the inbound adapters receiving uh, or subscribe to the bids and asks uh, events. And uh, 
when the events are received, it goes into the InterSystems Iris database, and then we uh, use the business logic to evaluate uh, the bids and asks against the stored orders, and then we send the matches to a business operation for publishing to the trades topic um, through the outbound adapter. So um, that is what we are going to um, look at uh, in this uh, demonstration. So what is the demo uh, environment really? What, what are we showing and what, what is running on my uh, laptop in this case? Um, we InterSystems Iris uh, 2022.1 Community Edition, uh, which is running inside a Docker container. Okay, and we also got an Apache Kafka installation running in the same container. So it's, a, it's the same host, uh, which is running InterSystems Iris and the Apache Kafka uh, broker. It requires a Zookeeper on a broker two components. Uh, currently, uh, in the near future, we know that uh, Kafka is going to do away with the Zookeeper, but that's um, uh, just good to know for now. Uh, we've also got a uh, Kafka producer, which is producing events. And uh, it's producing events inside um, uh, the container, uh, and and we are going to be using a, a shell uh, terminal to actually produce the events. And on the InterSystems Iris side, we've got a Kafka consumer uh, business service, which uh, consumes the events which are being produced in the console, and it then sends it on to the business process, and then that sends it on to the business operation. And if you look at that little screenshot which um, I've put on the slide. Uh, you see the pipeline, if you want to call it that, where the events are being received by the service, uh, being passed on to the Kafka trader process, and then uh, onto the nslib.kafka operation. So that's um, where we are. So uh, let's go and familiarize our, uh, ourselves with what we're going to see. We just change the screens. We uh, see that this is the InterSystems Iris 2022.1 Community Edition Management Portal, which is our web interface to manage the Iris instance, which is installed. Uh, we've got uh, four different uh, shell sessions, which I've already opened. On the top left is uh, the Zookeeper uh, component of Kafka. On the top right is the, the Broker component of Kafka. And I've just highlighted this little G1 over here, which I'll show you in a moment. And uh, it's identifying the fact that the InterSystems Iris instance is actually connected to it. Um, on the bottom left over here, um, this is where we are actually going to produce events. Um, in this case, we are going to uh, produce bids and asks. Uh, and on the right side, we've got a consumer, which is uh, if you recollect the solution, which I uh, was explaining earlier, it's where Iris pushes events out to the trades topic, and then those trades uh, topics will be visible over here when we actually do that. So that's um, one screen that you're going to look at. This is the management portal, and uh, this is a uh, bit of code that we'll look at later on, which is running inside a Visual Studio Code IDE. So essentially, those are the bits that I'm going to talk about. So um, Without further ado, uh, let's go and see uh, what we can do to actually kick off uh, a event. Oh, and I did mention that we wanted to see uh, what this G1 was. And um, if I go to Kafka settings over here, I see this group ID G1, um, which is what is actually uh, shown over here uh, with Kafka broker saying that I know that this particular group is connected. And that just helps Kafka to keep track of what messages it has served to a particular group. And if it has, then it won't do it again unless you ask for it specifically. So there's various uh, components within Kafka and features which um, uh, you, you will get to know when you use it uh, more and more. OK, so um, here we've got a um, session, a, a terminal session where we are running the Kafka console producer. Uh, and it's going to produce uh, events for the bids, asks, topics. And I've actually, um, in my uh, buffer, uh, copied a message which I'm going to send. If I paste it, hopefully that's correct. And this is a message which says uh, the date and time, um, and it's got a reference uh, which presumably has some meaning to the stockbroker or, or the person who submitted it. It says uh, it is for a security calls 
sec A in this case. Uh, it's a bid for 50, let's call it dollars. Um, the ask uh, field is zero, which uh, should be because this is a bid and um, it's, it says volume of 300. So if I want to uh, uh, explain that, that would be uh, someone is offering 300 units of uh, security A at $50. That's what it really means. Now, once I hit enter, that event has gone through, and uh, in a few moments, we'll see that the trades side of the shell has populated, but let's come back to that in just a moment. Uh, coming back to the uh, Intersystems Iris Management Portal, uh, this is uh, where we are actually uh, looking at the three components, the service, the uh, business process, and the operation running, and if I uh, go here and I, I just need to refresh this. I see that there is a message over here which wasn't there before. And if I click on that, it will uh, take me to a, a complete audit trail of what's happened, uh, which is one of the uh, very powerful features of Intersystem Virus Productions. We may have a complete audit trail of everything that every message that goes through the productions. So uh, we've got uh, this message that we were looking at, uh, the reference OH77, BB9 uh, N3 uh, security A, a bid for $50 for 300 um, uh, units of SEC A. So the moment that came in, we evaluated that and we uh, published a bunch of different um, orders that we could fulfill. And as um, if I look at this particular one over here, uh, it says that there are 1188 uh, to be uh, available to be fulfilled, but the bid is only for 300. The offer power price is the person willing to sell it at 44, and we've actually got a bid for $50. So um, here we go. We, we know how much we're going to make on, on this particular trade. There's another one here, offer price of 33 and, and a bid price of 50. So we're actually going to make more um, and more profit if we uh, um, trade this one. Uh, but uh, let me not go too much into detail because some of this is slightly contrived and we're li not likely to see these kind of marches in real uh, industry figures. but. That's uh, what it is, and as I was saying, if I go back to the, the shell uh, over here, we see that all of those messages have now been received back by the Kafka broker, and, and they are published here um, on, on this side. So that's uh, more or less the sum and substance of this. I could uh, send out another message, but that would add little value uh, to this particular uh, demonstration. We have uh, the trader process, which is actually showing many more messages uh, because this is the one that actually translated uh, the single message that came in into several events and uh, then sent it off to the Kafka operation, which has actually shipped out each of those events back to the broker. Um, and so, so this was so far a demonstration of us using a Kafka inbound and adapt, outbound adapter straight out of the box. So um, you just uh, plug it into the production, provide a particular uh, field which says where the Kafka broker is and um, more or less on you go and which topic you want to subscribe to. Um, here we're talking about a, a API library which also ships with uh, Intersystems Iris version 2022.1 onwards. And we've got the percent external library uh, dot messaging, which has all of these um, Kafka topic settings, Kafka settings, et cetera. These are low level APIs where you would go and specify how many partitions your Kafka brokers got, uh, replication factor of, um, of how you want these, uh, the, the particular Kafka broker to be configured, um, settings like servers, client ID, group ID, et cetera. Uh, and then um, methods like create topic, delete topic, uh, update producer configuration, consumer configuration, and and so on and so forth. It's not an exhaustive list, but I've put some of these out here just to show the kind of low level uh, API calls that are available. And um, if we can take a look at what we might want to do with uh, these calls. So you, you would typically um, say create a object called settings, uh, whatever that might be. And then uh, you use the, those settings to create the Kafka client. Then you update the Kafka client settings if you need at any point. Uh, you can create Kafka topic settings. And then uh, you call the Kafka client and then you um, ask it to send the message and, and receive messages. So this is a very rudimentary kind of uh, uh, look at 
uh, the way you might make those API calls. So let's go and look at um, some of these calls in our, um, our Visual Studio Code IDE. So here we've got a um, class, uh, which is the Kafka.test Kafka messaging client. Um, and this has a class method called Kafka client, which is where we've coded all of these uh, different calls to, to actually uh, create the Kafka client. So uh, we are uh, creating a client we are updating consumer, producer, etc., creating a topic, sending a message, and receiving the message back. Now, the way to test this, because this is uh, really calling low-level code, is we've actually got to go and trigger this code from uh, inside InterSystems Iris's uh, terminal. So, uh, so to do that, we want to go into um, the Iris terminal, which is running inside the container. So we're going to um, actually execute uh, the command on the iris um, component of the Docker comp composition that's running. And um, when it goes inside there, we're going to actually require the command iris session iris to uh, start the terminal. So there we go. We are now inside the iris terminal. We've made a connection. Uh, to Iris, we want to go into uh, namespace, which is where uh, the code is running. So we want to go into the namespace Kafka, which is where we are. And uh, the way we want to call this uh, <clears throat> particular uh, class method in object script would be um, do hash hash class. And for the sake of maintaining uh, accuracy, I'm just going to copy that in. It's a little bit wordy. And, um, and then we're going to call the Kafka client uh, method of this particular class. OK, so that should, in theory, call the code there, and we should see um, all the output that it provides. So uh, if we can just in increase the size of the window here. Uh, we've seen that it's making some reference to the logging component inside Kafka, which uh, is probably uh, not very important for this demonstration. It's updating the consumer, uh, updating the admin, creating a topic, et cetera, topic settings. It's send the message, receive the message. The time that it's taking really is to do with the fact that uh, Kafka, as well as Iris, are running inside a container on my laptop. So that speed of uh, execution that you saw is because of the constraints on the resources that are available to it. It's not an indication of the performance of either of these two uh, technologies. Um, and, and so what we did here was we created a, a topic or test bit asks. We sent a particular value through it, and then we received the value back uh, over here. And uh, these are just the delimiter. Um, uh, if you like, uh, escape characters uh, in object script that you're seeing over here. Okay. What, what I think we want to appreciate is that Kafka's throughput capacity and InterSystem Iris's class leading ingestion rates really makes them ideal partners. Uh, we are currently working with a financial services prospect uh, who will use Kafka to gather training data from hundreds of sources in real time, amounting to about one and a half million events per second and make near real time analytics available to their clients uh, with a peace of mind of running a highly available system all using one single platform that's into systems iris. Um, so whatever project you might have in mind that involves integration with a Kafka stream, we were able to start working on it today uh, using the power of into systems iris uh, data platform and uh, that demonstration hopefully uh, uh, highlighted all of those um, uh, abilities to you. On that note, I'm going to hand over to Bob and hear his thoughts on the subject. Great. Thank you very much, Kinchik. That was a terrific demo. So what are the key takeaways from today? Right? Kafka is the de facto scalable solution for streaming messages in today's enterprise, and you can use it for a wide variety of use cases across many industries. 
Intersystem Xyris makes it really easy to integrate with Kafka in both our low-code interoperability productions, as well as through a full-featured API that lets you do whatever you'd like. Uh, if you'd like to work with any of the code that you've seen today, the URL for it is uh, on the screen. That leaves us time for just one more thing. I would like to take this time to invite you to join us live and in person for InterSystems Global Summit 2022. It is in Seattle. It's next week. Uh, I am excited to actually see many current and, and future InterSystems customers there. Um, it will be the first one that's in person since I joined the company, so I'm, I'm very excited about that. So thank you very much for joining us. The question and answer will be next, so please stay on for that. Oh, and I forgot, connect with us by all means. Uh, if you have questions, comments, feedback, uh, Kinshuk and I are both very open to that. Uh, our email addresses are right here on the screen. So thank you and please do stay on for the question and answer part.